Playboy of the Western World by John Millington Singh. The action of the play takes place near a village on a wild coast of County Mayo in the west of Ireland. The first act passes on an evening of autumn, the other two acts on the following day. The scene is a country public house, or she bean, very rough and untidy. There's a sort of counter on the right with shelves above it, holding many bottles and jugs. There is a large open fireplace with a turf fire and a door leading directly to the open air. Peggy and Mike, a wild-looking but fine girl of about 20, is writing at the table. Six yards of stuff for to make a yellow gown. A pair of lace boots with lengthy heels on them and brassy eyes. A hat is suited for a wedding day. A fine tooth comb to be sent with three barrels of porter in Jimmy Farrell's creel cart on the evening of the coming fair to Mr. Michael James Flaherty. With the best compliments of this season, Margaret Flaherty. What ails you, Sean Kyo? Where's himself? He's coming to Mr. Seamus Mulroy, wine and spirit dealer, Castle Bear. I didn't see him on the road. How would you see him in a dark night this half hour gone by? I stood a while outside, wondering would I have a right to pass on or to walk in and see you, Peggy and Mike. And I could hear the cows breathing and sighing in the stillness of the air. And not a step moving any place from this gate to the bridge. It's above the crossroads he is, meeting Philly Cullen, and a couple more are going along with him to Kate Cassidy's wake. And he's going that length in the dark night. He is, surely. And leaving me lonesome on the scruff of the hill. Oh, isn't it long the nights are now, Sean Kyo, to be leaving a poor girl with her own self, counting the hours till the dawn of day? If it is, when we're wedded in a short while, you'll have no call to complain, for I've little will to be walking off to wakes or weddings in the darkness of the night. You're making mighty certain, Shaneen, that I'll wed you now. Aren't we after making a good bargain? The way we're only waiting these days on Father Riley's dispensation from the bishops or the court of Rome. It's a wonder Shawnee and the Holy Father be taking notice of the likes of you. But if I was him, I wouldn't bother with this place. For you'll meet none but red linen has a squint in his eye, and Patchine is lame in his heel, or the mad Mulrannies were driven from California and they lost in their wits. We are a queer lot these times to go troubling the Holy Father on a sacred seat. If we are, we're as good this place as another, maybe, and as good these times as we were forever. As good, is it? Where now will you meet the like of Danny and Sullivan? Knock the eye from a peeler. Our Marcus Quinn, God rest him, got six months for maim and yours. And he a great warrant to tell stories of Holy Ireland till you'd have the old women shedding down tears about their feet. Where will you find the like of them, I'm saying? If you don't, it's a good job, maybe. For Father Riley has small conceit to have that kind walking around and talking to girls. Ah, stop tormenting me with Father Riley. When I'm asking only what way I'll pass these twelve hours of the dark and I'll get me death with a fear. Would I fetch you the widow queen, maybe? Is the like of that murderer? You'll not, surely. Then I'm thinking himself will stop along with you when he sees you taking on. For it'll be a long night time with great darkness. And I'm after feeling a kind of fellow above in the furzy ditch, groaning wicked like a maddening dog. The way it's good cause you have maybe to be fearing now. What's that? Is it a man, you see? I couldn't see him at all, but I heard him groaning out and breaking his heart. It should have been a young man from his ward speaking. And you never went near to see was he hurt or what ailed him at all? I did not, Peggy Mike. It was a dark, lonesome place to be hearing the like of him. Well, you're a daring fella. 
And if they find his cart stretched above and the dews at dawn, what do you say then to the peelers or the justice of the peace? I wasn't thinking of that. For the love of God, Peggy, my don't let and I was speaking of him. Don't tell your father and the men is coming about. For if they hear that story, they'd have great blabbing this night of the way. I'll maybe tell them and I'll maybe not. They're coming at the door. Will you wish I'm safe? Ah, wish yourself. God bless you, the blessings of God in this house now. God save you kindly. Sit down now and take your rest. Uh, how is it you are, Sean Kyo? Are you coming over the sands to Kate Cassidy's wake? I am not, Michael James. I am going home the shortcut to my bed. Hmm. He's right too. And have you no shame, Michael James, to be quitting off for the whole night and leave myself lonesome in the shop? Yeah, isn't it the same whether I go for the whole night or a path only? I'm thinking it's a queer daughter you are if you'd have me crossing backward through the stooks of the dead women with a drop taken. If I am a queer daughter, it's a queer father that leave me lonesome these twelve hours of dark. And I pile in the turf with the dogs barking and the calves mooing and my own teeth rattle with the fear. Ah, oh, what's that to hurt you? And you a fine, hardy girl that knocked the head of any two men in the place. Isn't there the harvest boys with their tongues red for drink? And the ten tinkers is camped in the East Glen and the thousand militia... Bad cess to them, walking idle through the land. There's lots surely to harm me, and I won't stop alone in it. Let himself do what he will. If you're that afeard, let Sean Kyo stop along with you. It's the will of God I'm thinking himself shall be seeing to you now. <laughs> I wouldn't welcome Michael well James, but I'm afeard of Father Riley. And what at all would the Holy Father and the Cardinals of Rome be saying if they heard I did the like of that? Well, God help you. Can't you sit in be the hearth with the light lit and herself be on the room? You'll do that, surely. For I've heard tell there's a queer fellow above, going mad or getting his death, maybe, in the gripe of the ditch. So she'll be safer this night with a person here. I'm afeard of Father Riley, I'm saying. Let you not be tempting me, and we near married itself. Lock him in the west room. He'll stay then and have no <laughs> sin to be telling to the priest. <laughs> Go up now. Don't stop me, Michael James. Let me out of the door, I'm saying. For the love of Almighty God, let me out. Let me out. And may God grant you his indulgence in the hour of need. Uh, stop <laughs> your noise and sit down with the hat. Oh, Father <laughs> Riley, in the saints of God, where will I hide myself today? Oh, St. Joseph and St. Patrick and St. Bridget and St. James, have mercy on me now. <laughs> You'd be gone, is it? <laughs> oh, leave me go, Michael James. Leave me go, you old pagan. Leave me go, or I'll get the curse of the priest on you and of the scarlet coated bishops of the courts of Rome. <laughs> well, well, there's the court of a Christian man. Oh, there's sainted glory this day in the lonesome west. And with the will of God, I've got you a decent man, Peggy. And you'll have no call to be spying after if you have a score of young girls, maybe, weeding in your fields. What <laughs> right have you to be making game of a poor fellow for minding the priest? And it's your own the fault is, not paying a penny pot by to stand along with me and give me courage in the door of me work. Eh, yeah, where would I get a pot by? Would you have me send the bellman screaming in the streets of Castle Bear? Ah. Michael James. What ails you? The queer dying fellow's beyond looking over the ditch. He's coming up, I'm thinking, stealing your hens. Oh, God help me. He's following me now. And if he's heard what I said, he'd be having my life and I going home lonesome in the darkness of the night. God save all here. God save you kindly. God save kindly. kindly. I'd, I'd trouble you for a glass of porter, woman of the house. You're one of the tinkers, young fella. Is beyond camped in the glen. Aye, I am not, but I'm just tried walking. Uh, let you come up then to the fire. You're looking famished with the cold. I oh got who are you? Yeah. Is it often the poor is to be coming to this place, master oh. of the house? Polis. Look, if you'd come in better hours, you'd have seen license for the sale of beer and spirits to be consumed on the premises, written in white letters above the door. And what would the polis want spying on me? And not a decent house within four miles, the way every living Christian is a bonafide. Saving one widow alone. And it's a safe house, so. Huh? Yeah. Is it, uh, is it yourself is fearing the polis? Huh? You're wanting, maybe? Oh, there's many wanting. Aye, many surely with the broken harvest and the ended wars. It should be less in the end, thinking. Oh, no, I had it in my mind. It was a different word and a bigger. There's a queer lad. Well, you never slapped in school, young fella, that you don't know the name of your dean. I have slow at learning, a Midland scholar only. If you're a dunce, it's it. You'd have a right to know that Larson is robbing and stealing. Is it for the like of that you're wanting? And I, the son of a strong farmer, 
God rest his soul. Could have bought up the whole of your old house a while since from the butt of his tail pocket and not have missed the ways of it, Dan. Hmm. If it's not stealing, it's maybe something big. Yeah, yeah it's maybe something big. He's a wicked-looking young fella. May maybe he followed after a young woman in a lonesome night. Oh, the saints forbid, mister. I was all times a decent lad. You were a silly man, Jimmy Farrell. He said his father was a farmer a while since, and there's himself now in a poor state. Maybe the land was grabbed from him, and he did what any decent man would do. Oh. Was it uh, bailiffs? Or the devil of one. Agents? Devil of one. Landlords? And not at all, I'm saying. You see the like of them stories in any little paper of a monster town, and I'm not calling to mind any person, gentle, simple, judge or jury, did the like of me. Well, that different. lad's a puzzle the world. Well, he'd be Dan Davy's circus, or the holy missioners making sermons in the villainy of man. Here, here, throw him again, Philly. Did you strike golden guineas out of Saul, the young fella, or shilling coins itself? Yeah, I did not, mister, nor sixpence, nor a thousand kind. Did you marry three wives, maybe? I'm told there's a sprinkling have done that among the holy Luthers of the preacher north. <laughs> Should I never married with one, let alone a couple or three? Maybe he went fighting for the Boers, the like of the man beyond was judged to be hanged, quartered and drawn. Were you off east, young fella, fighting bloody wars for Kruger and the freedom of the Boers? Yeah, I never left me own parish till Tuesday was a week. He's done nothing so. Huh? If you didn't commit murder or a bad, nasty thing, or false coin, and our robbery or butchery or the like of them, there isn't anything that would be worth your trouble for to run from now. You did nothing at all. Oh, that's an unkindly thing to be saying. To a poor orphan traveller has a prison behind him. Prison? Mm -hmm. And hanging before. Mm -hmm. And hell's gap gaping below. You're only saying it. You did nothing at all. A soft lad like you wouldn't slit the windpipe of a screeching soul. No, you're not speaking the truth. Not speaking the truth, is uh. it? Would you have me knock the head off you with the butt of the broom? Ah, don't strike me. I killed me poor father oh. Tuesday was a week for doing the like of that. Glory to your God. Is it killed your father? Yeah, with the help of God, he did, surely. May the Holy Mother of God intercede for his soul. There's a dear oh, fellow. Glory right to God. Mm. That was a hanging crime, Mr. Honey. You, you should have good reason for doing the like of that. Yeah, he was a dirty man, God forgive him, and he get gnawed and crusty. The way I couldn't put up with him at all. And you shot him dead. I never used weapons. I've no license, and I'm a law-fearing man. It was with a hilted knife, maybe. I'm told in the big world it's bloody knives they use. Hey, do you take me for a slaughter, boy? You never hanged him, the way Jimmy Farrell hanged his dog from the license and had it screeching and wriggling three hours at the butt of a string and himself swear it was a dead dog and the peeler swearing it had life. I did not, then. I just riz the lie and let fall the edge of it on the ridge of his skull and he went down at my feet like an empty sack. Never let a grunt or groan from him at all. Oh. And, and uh, what way weren't you hanged, mister? Did you bury him then? Aye, aye, I buried him then. She wasn't a digging spots in the field. And the peelers never followed after you the 11 days you're out? Never a one. And I walking forward, facing hog dog or devil on the highway or the road. It's only with a common weekday kind of murderer them lads would be thrusting their carcass. And that man should be a great terror when his temper's roused. He shouldn't. Uh, and where was it, Mr. Honey, that you did the deed? Oh, a distant place, master of the house. A windy corner of high, distant hills. He's the close man, and he's right, surely. That'd be a lad with the sense of Solomon to have for a pot by Michael James, if it's the truth you're seeking one at all. The peelers is fearing him, and if you were that lad in the house, there isn't one of them would come smelling around. If the dogs itself were lapping pots in from the dung pit of the yard. Now, bravery is a treasure in a lonesome place. And a man who kill his father, I'm thinking, would face a foxy devil with a pitchpike and the flags of hell. It's the truth they're saying. And if I that lad in the house, I wouldn't be fearing the loose at khaki cutthroats or the walking dead. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> uh, would you think well to stop here and be pot by, Mr. Honey? If we gave you good wages and didn't destroy you with a way to work. That'd be a queer kind to bring into a decent, quiet household with the like of Peggy and Mike. Will you wish to who's speaking to you? Bloody-handed murderer the like of that. Wished I'm saying we'll take no fooling from your like at all. And you, young fella. Yeah? You'd have a right to stop, I'm thinking. For we do our all and utmost to content your needs. 
And I'd be safe this place from the searching law. Yeah, you would, surely. If they're not fearing you would self, the peelers in this place is decent, droughty, poor fellas. Wouldn't touch a cold dog and not give one in the dead of night. Let you stop a short while anyhow. Aren't you destroyed walking with your feet in bleeding blisters and your whole skin needing washing like your Wicklow sheep? <laughs> it's a nice room. And if it's not humbugging me, or I'm thinking I'll surely stay. Oh, with the grace of God, herself will be safe this night. With a man's killed his father hole in danger from the door. Let you come on now, Michael James. They'll have the best tough trunk of the way. Yeah, right off. Oh, oh, come on. Begging your pardon, mister. Uh, what name will we call you? For we'd like to know. Christopher Mahan. Well, God bless you, Christy. And a good night till we meet again when the sun will be rising to the noon of day. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, God bless you now. Are you wanting me to stop along with you and keep you from harm? Didn't you say you were fear and father, Riley? There'd be no harm staying now. I'm thinking of himself in it too. You wouldn't stay when there was need for you. And let you step off Nimble this time when there's none. Didn't I say it was Father Riley? Go on then to Father Riley. And let him put you in the holy brotherhoods and leave that lad to me. If I meet the widow queen... Go on, I'm saying, and don't be waking this place with your noise. <sighs> that lad would wear the spirits from the saints of peace. Let you stretch out now be the fire, young fella. You should be destroyed travelling. Uh, I'm, I'm tired, surely. Walking wild eleven days and waking fearful in the night. You should have had great people in your family, I'm thinking. <laughs> With the little small feet you have. And you were the kind of a quality name. The like of what you'd find on the great powers and potentates of France and Spain. Oh, we were great, surely with wide and windy acres of rich monster land. Wasn't I telling you? And you a fine, handsome young fella huh? with a noble brow. Is it me? Aye. Did you never hear that from the young girls where you come from in the West or South? No, oh, I did not then. Yeah, there are bloody liars in the naked parish where I grew a man. If they are itself, you've heard it these days, I'm thinking. And you walk in the world. Telling out your story to young girls are all. I've told my story. No place till this night, Peggy and Mike. And as foolish I was here, maybe, to be talking free. <laughs> but you're decent people. And yourself a kindly woman, the way I wasn't fearing you at all. You've said the like of that, maybe. In every cot and cabin where you've met a young girl on your way. Oh, I've said it nowhere till this night, I'm telling you. For I've seen none the like of you. The eleven long days I am walking the world, looking over a low ditch or a high ditch on my north or south, into stony, scattered fields or scribes of bog, where you'd see young, limber girls and fine prancing women making laughter with the men. If you weren't destroyed travelling, you'd have as much talk and streeling, I'm thinking, as Owen Roe Sullivan or the poets of the Dingle Bay. <laughs> and I've heard all times as the poets are you like. Fine, fiery fellas with great rages when their tempers rose. Oh, eh? <laughs> yeah, you, you have a power of rings on you, God bless you. And would there be any offence if I was asking, are you single now? What would I want wedding so young? <laughs> would I like so? I never kill me, father. I'd be afeard to do that, except I was the like of yourself with blind rages tear me within. But I'm thinking... You should have had great tussling when the end was come. Ah, we had not then. It was a hard woman was come over the hill, and if he was always a crusty kind, we need a hard woman setting him on, not the devil himself or his forefathers could put up with him at all. And isn't it a great wonder that one wasn't fearing you? Oh, sure, up to the day I killed my father. There wasn't a person in Ireland knew the kind I was, and I there, drinking, waking... Eat and sleep and a quiet, simple poor fella with no man giving me heed. It was the girls were giving you heed, maybe. And I'm thinking it's most conceit you'd have to be gaming with their uh, like. Not the girls itself, and I won't tell you a lie. There was no one heed me in that place, saving only the dumb beasts of the field. And I thinking you should have been living the like of a king of Norway or the Eastern world. <laughs> the like of a king, is it? And I after toiling, miling, digging, dodging from dawn till dusk, 
with never a sight of joy or sport, saving only when I'd be abroad in the dark night, poaching rabbits on hills. For I was a devil to poach, God forgive me. I near got six months for going with a dung fork and stabbing a fish. And it's that you'd call sport, is it? To be abroad in the darkness with yourself alone? Mm, I did. God help me. And there I'd be as happy as the sunshine on St. Martin's Day, watching the light pass in the north, or the patches of fog, till I'd hear a rabbit starting to screech, and I'd go running in the forest, and then, when I'd my full share, I'd come walking down where you'd see the ducks and geese stretched sleeping on the highway of the road, and before I'd pass the dunghill, I'd hear himself snoring out. Oh, loud, lonesome snore he'd be making all times the while he was sleeping. And he a man would be raging all times the while he was waking. Like a, like a gaudy officer he'd hear cursing and damning and swearing oaths. Providence and mercy, spare us all. It's that you'd say, surely. And you've seen him, and he after drinking for weeks, rising up in the red dawn, or before it maybe, and going out into the yard, as naked as an ash tree in the moon of May, and shying clods at the visage of the stars, till he put the fear of death into the bonnets and the screeching and sows. I'd be well now you feared of that lad myself, I'm thinking. And there was no one in it but the two of you alone. Ah, the devil of one. Though he'd sons and daughters, walking all great states and territories of the world, and not a one of them to this day, but I'd say there are seven curses on him, and they rose up to let a car for a sneeze, maybe, in the deadness of the night. Well, you should have been a queer lot. I never cursed me father the like of that, though I'm twenty and more years of age. Oh, ah, well, you'd have cursed mine, I'm telling you. And he, a man, never gave peace to any, saving only when he get two months or three, or be locked up in the asylums for battering peelers or assaulting men. Ah. The way it was a bitter life he led me, till I did up a Tuesday and half a skull. Well, you will have peace in this place, Christy man, and none to trouble you. And it's near time a fine lad like you should have your good share of the earth. Aye, it's time, surely. And I a seemly young fellow with great strength in me and the bravery of a an... knight. Oh, oh, glorious late for knocking. And this shot while I'm in terror of the peelers and the walking dead. Who's there? Me? Who's me? The widow Quinn. Go on out with your supper and let Aunt to be sleepy. For if she found you were such a warrant to talk, she'd be stringing gabble till the dawn of day. Aye. What ails you? And what is it you're wanting at this hour of the night? I'm after meeting Sean Q and Father Riley below, who told me of your curiosity, man. And they fear me this time. He wasn't maybe roaring, romping on your hands with drink. Look now, is he roaring? And he stretched out throsy with his supper and his mug of milk. Walk down and tell that to Father Riley and to Shawnee and Kyo. I'll not see them again. For I've their word to lead that lad forward for to lodge with me. This uh, night, is it? This night? It isn't fitting, says the priest Dean, to have his likeness lodging with an orphan girl. <sighs> God save you, mister. God save you kindly. Well, lads, you a little smiling fella. <laughs> it should have been great and bitter torments did rouse your spirits to a deed of blood. Aye, aye, it should, maybe. Yeah, it's more than maybe, I'm saying. And it'd soften me hair to see you sitting so simple with your cup and cake. And you fitted to be saying your catechism that slain your dad. There's talking. When any can see, he's fit to be holding his head high with the wonders of the world. Walk on from this, for I'll not have him tormented, and he destroyed travelling since Tuesday was a week. He'll be walking, surely, when his supper's done. And you'll find we're great company, young fella, when it's of the likes of you and me, I'd hear the penny pot singing in a novice fair. Hey, did you kill your father? She did not. She hit himself with a war and pick, and the rusted iron did corrode his blood the way he never overed it and died after. Oh. That was a sneaky kind of a murder. Did win small glory with the boys itself. If it didn't, maybe all knows a window would have buried her children and destroyed her man. Is a wiser company for a young lad than a girl the like of you who'd go help her skeltering after any man would let you a wink upon the road. And you said that with a quin. And you gasping with the rage you had, racing the hills beyond to look on his face. Me, is it? Well, Father Riley has cuteness to divide you now. 
Mm, there's great temptation in a man did slay his dare. And we best be going, young fellow, so rise up and come with me. He'll and... not stir. He's pot boy in this place, and I'll not have him stolen off and kidnapped while himself's abroad. It'll be a crazy pot boy and lodge him in the she bean where he works by day. So you'd have a right to come on, young fellow, till you see my little house sheen a perch off on the rising hill. Wait till morning, Christy man. Wait till you lay eyes on our leaky thatch. It's grown more pasture for our buck goat than our square of fields. And she without a tramp itself to keep an order her place at all. When you see me contriving in my little gardens, Christy man, you'll swear the Lord God for me to be living alone. And that there isn't my match in my own for thatching or mowing or shearing a sheep. It's through the Lord God for him due to contrive indeed. Doesn't the world know you were seen rearing a black ram at your own breast, so that the Lord Bishop of Connacht felt the elements of a Christian and eaten it after in a kidney stew? Doesn't the world know you were seen shaving the foxy skipper from France for a thruppenny bit and a sop of grass tobacco would wring the liver from a mountain goat you'd meet leap in the hills? <laughs> Do you hear her now, young fella? Do you hear the way she'll be raking at your own self when a week is by? Don't uh, heed her. Tell her to go on into her pigsty and not plague us here. I'm going. But he'll come with me. Are you oh, dumb young fella? <laughs> they may God increase you, ma'am. But, but I'm pat by in this place, and it's here I'd leave for stay. Now you have heard him, and go on from this. It's lonesome this hour crossing the hill. And if he won't come along with me, I'd have a right maybe to stop this night with yourselves. What? Oh, Let me stretch out on the settle, Peggy and Mike, and himself can lie be the hair. Faith, I won't. Quit off or I send you <laughs> now. Oh, well, it's a terror to be aged, a score. God bless you now, young fella. Exactly. And that you be wary. Others' oh, right torment will await you here if you go romancing with her like. And she wait only, as they bade me say, on a sheepskin parchment to be wed with Sean Kyo of Killakeen. Hey, what? What's that she's after saying? Lies and blabbery of no call to mind. Well, isn't Sean Kyo an impudent fella to send up spying on me? Wait till I lay me hands on him. Let him wait, I'm saying. And you're not wedding him at all? I wouldn't wed him if a bishop came walking for to join us here. Oh, that God and glory may be thanked for that. There's your bed now. Oh, eh? I've put a quilt upon you I'm after quilting a while since with me own two hands. And you would best stretch out now for your sleep. And may God give you a good rest till I call you in the morning when the cocks will crow. And may God and Mary and St. Patrick bless you and reward you for your kindly talk. Uh, well, it's a clean bed. Mm, and soft with it. <laughs> and isn't it great luck and company I've won me in the end of time. <laughs> Two fine women fighting over the likes of me. Oh, till I'm thinking this night, wasn't I the foolish fella not to kill me father in the years gone by? Friends like I got this new Wii U. We actually went to go look at theirs, and we we're like, "Whoa, look at this Wii U!" We got to upgrade. I can't lie. When we first got the original Wii, the, the graphics in. That's above. Eighty jugs, six cups, and a, and a broken one. Two plates, <laughs> power of glasses. 
Bottles of schoolmaster be had set to count, and enough in the mind thinking to drunken all the wealth and wisdom of the county Clare. Ah, there's her boots now. Nice and decent for her evening use. Oh, isn't it the grand brushes she has? Well, this would be a fine place to be. Me whole life talking out with swearing Christians and placing me old dogs and cat. And I stalking around, smoking me pipe and drinking me fill. And never a day's work but drawing a carcan out time, or wiping a glass, or rinsing out a shiny tumbler for a decent man. Ah, oh, didn't I know rightly I was handsome? That was the devil's own mirror we had beyond, a twist a squint across an angel's brow. And I'll be growing fine from this out, though I'll have a lovely, soft skin on me, and won't be the like of them clumsy young fellas to be ploughing all times in the earth and dung. <laughs> but is she coming again? Stranger girls, God help me where I hide myself away and my long neck naked to the world. I best go to the room maybe till I'm dressed again. There's nobody in it. It's early for them both to be out walking the hill. I'm thinking Sean Kyo was making game of us and there's no such man in it at all. Oh, look at that. He's been sleeping there in the night. Well, it'll be a hard case if he's gone off now. The way we'll never set our eyes on a man killed his father, and we have to rise in early and destroy ourselves running fast in the hill. Are you thinking them's his boots? Well, if they are, there should be his father's tracking them. Did you never read in the papers the way murdered men do bleed and drip? Is that blood there, Sir Tansy? Hmm? That's bog water, I'm thinking. But it's his own they are, surely. For I never seen the like of them, for whitey modern, red modern turf on them, and the fine sands of the sea. That lad's been walking, I'm telling you. Maybe he's stolen off to Bell Mullet with the boots of Michael James. And you'd have a right sort to follow after him, Sarah Tansy. And you the one yoked the ass cart and drove ten miles to set your eyes on the man bit the yellow lady's nostril on the northern shore. Ah, don't be talking, and we fool today. Hey. There's a pair do fit me well. <laughs> and I'll be keeping them for walking to the priest. When you be ashamed this place, going up winter and summer with nothing worthwhile to confess at all. Wish, wish there's someone inside in the room. <laughs> it's a man! <laughs> I call him. Mister! Mister! Is Peggy in with him? Ah, she's above on the canucky and... Seeking the nanny goats, the way she's have a sup of goat's milk for to colour me tea. And begging your pardon, huh? is it you the man that's killed his father? I am, yeah, God help me. Then my thousand welcomes to you. And I run up with a brace of duck's eggs for your food today. Peggy's ducks is no use at all, but these are the real rich sort. Hold out your hand, you see, it is no lie, I'm telling you. <laughs> They're a great and weighty size. <laughs> and I run up at a pat of butter. Brave me poor thing to have you eaten your spuds dry. And you have to run a great way since you did destroy your dad. <laughs> and thank you, thank you kindly. Uh, I brought you a little cut of cake, for you should have a thin stomach on you and you that length walk in the world. And, and I brought you a little lane full of oh. boiled and all she is, was crushed at the fall and I'd be the curate's car. <laughs> Feel the fat of that breast, mister. Yeah, oh, she's bursting, surely. How will you pinch it? Is your right hand too sacred for to use at all? It's a uh, glass, uh, yes. <laughs> oh, I never seen to this day. A lad with a looking glass held to his back. <laughs> Them that kills their father is a vain lot, surely. <laughs> I, I'm very thankful to you all this day. Clara <laughs> Tansy, Susan Brady, Anna Blake. What's the glory has you here at this hour of day? Yes, that's the man that killed his father. I know, well, it's the man. And I'm after putting him down on the sports below huh? for racing, lipping, pitching, and the Lord knows oh, what. Are you done the right thing, Widow Quinn, and I'll bet me dowry that he licked the world. If you will, you'd have a right to have him fresh and nourished in place of nursing a feast. Are you fast nor fed, young fella? Uh, well, I'm fasting, if you please. Ma. Well, you're the lot. Stop up now and give him his breakfast. Come here to me and let you tell us your story before Peggy will come. In place of grinning your ears off like the moon of May. Ah, it's a long story, but it's tried listening. Don't feel it not to be shy. A fine, gamey, treacherous lad the like of you. Was it in your house beyond your cracked his skull? It was not. We were digging spuds in this cold, 
slopping, stony, devil's patch of a field. And you went asking money of him, or making talk of getting a wife with driving from his farm. Oh, I did not then, but there I was, digging and digging, and yes, squinting it, just as he. Let you walk down now and tell the priest you'll wed the widow Casey in a score of days. And what kind was she? Oh, walking terror from me oh. on the hills, and she... Two score and five years, <laughs> and two hundred ways and five pounds in the weighing scales, <laughs> with a limping leg on her and a blinded eye, oh. and she a woman of noted misbehaviour with the old and young. <laughs> oh, oh, and what did he want driving you to wed with her? Yeah, he was letting on I was wanting to protect her from the harshness <laughs> of the world, and he without a thought the whole while, only the way he'd have her hut to live in and her gold to drink. There's maybe worse than a dry hat and a widow woman and your glass at night. <laughs> so you hit him then? I did not. I won't wed her, says I. When all knows, she did suckle me six weeks when I came into the world. And she a hag with a tongue on her has the crows and seaboards scattered. <laughs> The weather wouldn't cast a shadow on our garden with the threat of her curse. That one should be right company. I don't mind her. Did you kill him then? She's too good for the likes of you, says he. And go on now, or I'll flatten you out like a crawling beast as passed her under a dray. <laughs> you will not if I can help it, says I. Go on, says he. Or I'll have the devil make and gart to see your limbs tonight. You will not if I can help it, says I. You are right, surely. And with that, the sun came out between a cloud and the hill and it's shining green on my face. Oh, the Lord of mercy in your soul, says he, lifting aside. Or on your own, says I, raising a lie. Oh, it's a grand story. Oh, he it lovely. Well, he gave a drive at the side, and I took a lap to the east. Then I turned around with me back to the north, and I hit him a blow at the ridge of his skull, laid him stretched out, and he split to the knob of his gun. Oh, my God, that's <laughs> I'm thinking the Lord God sent him this roar to make a second husband to the widow queen. <laughs> and she was a great yearning to be wedded. Though all the red are here, lift him on her knee, sir. Ah, don't Ah, oh, when you're here, oh, surely, let you drink a suffeen now, with your arms linked, like the outlandish lovers in the sailor song. There now, drink a toast to the wonders of the Western world, the pirates, preachers, potsheen makers with the job and jockeys. Parch and peelers, and the juries fill their stomachs selling judgments of the English law. Oh, that's all right, to Sarah Tansy. Now, Christy. <laughs> what is it you want? Uh, an answer to that. Have you tuppence? I've forgotten my purse. Then you'll best be getting it and not be fooling us here. <laughs> and what is it you're wanting, Widow Quinn? A pen of the stairs. And you without a white shift or a shirt in your whole family since the drying of the flood. I've no start with a like you. And let you walk on now to kill him up. Ah, well, you're my sea hoppy this day, Peggy and Mike. And you, young fella, yeah. let you not forget the sports and racing when the noon is by. <laughs> Fling out that rubbish and put them cups away. Shove in the bench be the wall. And hang that glass on the nail. What disturbed it at all? Oh, I was making myself decent only. And this a fine country for young lovely girls. Wished you're talking against. Yeah, well, sure wouldn't any wish to be decent in a place. Wished I'm saying. Yeah. It was with a lie that like a this I killed me father. You've told me that story six times since the dawn of day. It's a queer thing. You wouldn't want to be hearing it. And them girls... After walking four miles to be listening to me now. Four miles? Aye. Well, she didn't himself say there was only bona fides living in this place. It's bona fides be the road there. But that lot came over the river lepping the stones. It's not three patches when you go like that. And I was down this morning looking on the papers the post boy does have in his bag. Huh? For there was great news this day, Christopher Mahan. Is, is it news of me murder? Murder indeed. Be murdered there? There was not. But a story filled half a page of the hanging of a man. Ah, that should be a fearful end, young fella. And it worst of all for a man destroyed his dad. But the like of him would get small mercies. And when it's dead he is, they'd put him in a narrow grave with cheap sacking wrapping him round and pour down quicklime on his head the way you see any woman pouring fresh fresh from a cup. Oh, God, God help me. 
Uh, are you thinking I'm safe? You were saying at the fall of night, I was shut of jeopardy and I hear with yourselves. You'll be shut of jeopardy no place if you go talking with a pack of wild girls the like of them. To be walking abroad with the peelers, talking whispers at the fall of night. And you think they tell? Who knows? God help you. So what joy would they have to bring hanging to the likes of me? It's queer joys they have. And who knows the thing they do if it'd make the green stones cry itself. To think of you swearing and swiggling at the butt of a rope, oh. and you with a fine stout neck, God bless you, the way you'll be half an hour in great anguish getting your death. Oh, if there's that terror of them, it'd be best, maybe. I went on wandering like Esau or Cain and Abel on the sides of Nafing or the Eris Plain. It would, maybe, for I've heard the circuit judges this place is a heartless crew. Well, it's more than judges this place is a heartless crew. And isn't it a poor thing to be starting again? And I alone, some poor fella, to be looking out on women and girls, the way the fallen needy spirits to be looking on the Lord. What call of you to be that lonesome when there's poor girls walking mayo in their thousands now? Ah, it's well you know what call I have. It's well you know. It's a lonesome thing to be passing small towns with the lights shining sideways when the night is down or going into strange places with a dog noising before you and a dog noising behind, or drawn to the cities where you'd hear a voice kissing and talking deep love in every shadow of the ditch, and you passing on with an empty, hungry stomach failing from your heart. I'm thinking you're an odd man, Christy man. The oddest walking fellow I ever set me eyes on to this hour today. Oh, why would any be but odd men and they live in lonesome in the world? I'm not odd. And I'm my whole life with me father only. Ah, sir, so how would a lovely, handsome woman the like of you be lonesome? When all men should be thronging around to hear the sweetness of your voice. And the little infant children should be pestering your steps, I'm thinking, and you walk on the roads. I'm hard set to know what way a coaxing fella the like yourself should be lonesome either. Huh? Coaxing? Would you have me think a man never talked with the girls would have the words you've spoken today? It's only letting on you are to be lonesome, the way you get around me now. I wish to God I was letting on. Ah, uh, but I was lonesome all times. High and born lonesome, I'm thinking, as the moon of dawn. Well, it's a story I'm not understanding at all. Why, you would be worse than another, Christy man. And you a fine lad with the great savagery to destroy your dad. It's little I'm understanding myself, saving only that my heart's scalded this day. And I going off, stretching out the earth between us. The way I won't be waking near you another dawn of the year. Till the two of us do rise to hope and judgment with the saints of God. Ah... Uh, and now I'd best be going, with me wattle in me hand. For hanging's a poor thing, and this little welcome has left me in this house today. Christy. Uh, come here to me. Lay down that switch and throw some sods on the fire. You're pot boy in this place, and I not have you much off from us now. Well, you were saying I'd be hanged if I stay. I'm after going down and reading the fearful crimes of Ireland for two weeks or three. And there wasn't a word of your murder. Oh. They've likely not found the body. You're safe so with ourselves. And it's making game of me you were. <laughs> and I can stay so working at your side. And I not lonesome from this mortal day. What's to hinder you staying? Except the widow woman and the young girls would oh. inveigle you off. And I'll have your words from this day filling me ears. And that look has come upon you, meeting me two eyes. And I watching you loafing around in the warm sun, or rinsing your ankles when the night has come. I'm thinking you will be a loyal young lad to have working around. And if you vexed me a while since with your leaguing with the girls, I wouldn't give a thraneen for a lad hadn't a mighty spirit in him and a gamey heart. <laughs> well, Sean Kyo. I was passing below, and I seen your mountainy sheep eating cabbages in Jimmy's field. Run up or they'll be bursting, surely. Oh, God, mend them. Well, I'd best go to her aid, maybe, for I, I'm handy with yours. She can do that much. Uh, and there is Sean, Ian has long speeches for to tell you now. Do you see that, mister? Uh, but the, the half of a ticket to the Western States. I'll give it to you, and my new hat, and my breeches with the double seat, 
and my new coat is woven from the blackest shearings for three miles around. Oh. I give you the whole of them, and my blessing, and the blessing of Father Riley itself, maybe, if you'll quit from this and leave us in the peace we had till last night at the fall of death. Uh, and for what is it you want to get shot in, eh? Huh? I, I'm a poor scholar with middling faculties to kind of lie, so I'll tell you the truth, Christy Mahan. I'm waiting with Peggy in beyond. Oh. And I don't think well of having a clever, fearless man the like of you dwelling in her house. And you'll be using bribery for to banish me. Let you not take it badly, Mr. Honey. Isn't beyond the best place for you where you'll have golden chains and shiny coats and you're riding upon hunters with the ladies of the land? It's true, Farm. And you'd best quit off and not have that poor girl setting her mind on you. But there's Janine thinks she wouldn't suit you. Though all the same, she'll wed you now. <laughs> she wouldn't suit you, and she with the devil's own temper. The way you'd be strangling one another in a score of days. It's the like of me only that she's fit for. <laughs> a quiet, simple fella wouldn't raise a hand upon her if she scratched itself. Put them clothes on you anyhow, young fella. Mm -hmm. And he'll maybe loan them to you for the sports. Put them on, and you can give your answer when you have them tried. I will, then. <laughs> I'd like herself to see me in them tweeds and hat. <laughs> Oh, we'd like ourselves to see them. He'll not leave us with the Queen. He's a score of devils in him, the way it's well nigh certain he will wed Peggy. That's true, all getters are fond of courage and do hate the like of you. Oh, widow Queen, what'll I be doing now? I'd inform again him, but he'd burst from Kilmainham, him, and he'd be sure and certain to destroy me. If I wasn't so God fearing, I'd need have courage to come up behind him and run a pike into his side. Oh, it's a hard case to be an orphan and not to have your father that you're used to and you'd easy kill and make yourself a hero <laughs> on the side of all. Oh, Widow Quinn, will you find me some contrivance when I promised you a yo? Yeah, a yo is a small thing. But what would you give me if I did wet him and did save you so? You? Aye, would you give me the red cow you have and the mountaineer ram and the right away across your right path and a load of dung at Michaelmas and Turbury upon the western hill? I would surely... And I'd give you the wedding ring I have, and the load of a new suit. The way you'd have them decent on the wedding day. I'd give yeah. you two kids for your dinner, mm. and a gal to potch in, and I'd call the piper on the long car to your wedding from Cross Maliner from Bellinair. I'd give you... Better do so, and as you wished, for he's coming now again. Well, if you've seen yourself now, I'm thinking you'd be too proud to speak to at all. <laughs> and it'd be a pity, surely, to have your like Satan from A.O. to the Western world. Oh, should I not go on? If this is a poor place itself, I'll make myself contented to be lodging here. Well, I'm going measuring the race course while the tide is low, so I'll leave you the garments and my blessing for the sports today. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> well, you're mighty spruce, young fella. Sit down now while you're quietly a talk with me. I'm going abroad on the hillside for to seek Peggy. You'll have time and plenty for to seek Peggy. And you heard me saying at the fall of night that two of us should be great company. Oh, from this out. <laughs> I'll have little want of company when all sorts is bringing me their food and clothing. The way they can cast their eyes on a gallant orphan, cleft his father with one blow to the British belt. Saints of glory. Holy angels from the throne of light. What ailed you? It's, it's the walking spirit of me mother, da. Is it that tramp? Well, I hide me poor body away from that ghost to hell. Here, get down behind the coat. God save you, me poor man. Did you see a young lad passing this way in the early morning of the fall of night? You're a queer kind to walk in. Not saluting at all. Did you see the young lad? What kind was he? An ugly young streeler with a murderous scarf on him and a little switch in his hand. I met a tramper seen him coming this way at the fall of night. There's half as hundreds to be passing these days for the sly go board. But what is it you're wanting of me, poor man? I want to destroy him for breaking the head on me with the clout of a lie. <laughs> Look at it. It was he did that. And I'm a great wonder to think I've traced him ten days with that rent in me clown. <laughs> that was a great blow. And who hit you? A robber, maybe? It was me own son hit me, and he the devil a robber, or anything else, but a dirty, stuttered and lout. <laughs> You'd best be wary of a mortified scalp, I think they call it, lepping around with that wound in the splendour of the sun. Oh, it was a bad blow, surely. And you should have vexed him fearful to make him strike that gash in his dare. Is it me? Eh? And isn't it a great shame when the old and hard do torment the young? Torment him, is it? <laughs> and I after holding out with the patience of a martyr saint till there's nothing but destruction on and I'm driven out in me old age with none to aid me. It's a sacred wonder the way that wickedness will spoil a man. My wickedness, is it? Am I after saying it is himself as me destroyed and he a liar on walls a talker of folly, a man you'd see stretched the half of the day in the brown ferns with his belly to the sun. Not working at all. The devil of work, or if he did itself, 
You'd see him racing up a haystack like the stalk of a rush, or driving our last cow till he broke her leg at the hip. <laughs> and when he wasn't at that, he'd be fooling over little bullets he had, <laughs> finches and felts, or making mugs at his own self in the bit of a glass we had hung on the wall. What way was he so foolish? Oh, it was running wild after the gettles, maybe. Running wild, is it? Look at if he seen a red petticoat coming swinging over the hill, he'd be off to hide in the <laughs> sticks. And you'd see him shooting out his sheep's eyes between the little twigs and the leaves. And his two ears rising like a hare looking out through a gap. <laughs> Heralds indeed. It was drink, maybe. And he, a poor fella, would get drunk on the smell of a pint. <laughs> He'd a queer rotten stomach, I'm telling you. And when I give him three pulls me pipe a while since, he was taken with contortions till I had to send them in the ass cat to the female's house. <laughs> well, I never till this day heard tell of a man the like of that. I take a mighty oath you didn't, surely. And wasn't he the laughing joke of every female woman where four baronies meet? The way the girls had stopped their weeding if they seen him come on the road to let her roar at him and call him the loony man. <laughs> I'd give the world an all to see the like of him. What kind was he? A small low fella. And dark. Dark and dirty. I'm thinking I seen him. An ugly young black ass. Ah, he just fearful villain. And the spit of you. What way is he, Fred? Gone over the hills to catch a coast and steamer to the north mm. or south. Could I pull up on him now? If you'll cross the sands below where the tide is out, you'll be in it as soon as himself. For he had to go round ten miles be the top of the bay, straight down be the head beyond, and then follow on the roadway to the north or east. Let you give him a good vengeance when you come up with him. But don't put yourself in the power of the law, for it'll be a poor thing to see a judge in his black cap reading out his sentence on a civil warrior to like you. <laughs> well, you're the walking slave eye of the Western world. <laughs> and that's the poor man you had to void it to his breeches belt. <laughs> hey, what'll Peggy in say when she hears that story? What'll she be saying to me now? She'll knock the heady I'm thinking and drive you from the door. God help her to be taking you for a wonder. And you a little schemer making up a story you destroyed your dad. Ah, uh -huh, to be letting and he was dead. <laughs> and coming back to his life. And following after me like an old weasel tracing a rat. And coming in here and laying desolation between myself and the fine women of Ireland. And he a kind of carcass you'd fling upon the sea. There's talking for a man's one only son. His one son, is it? Well, may I meet him with one tooth and his aching, and one eye to be seeing seven and seventy dibbles in the twists of the road, and one old timber leg on him to limp into the scarling grave. Oh, there he is now, crossing the strands. And that the Lord God has sent down a high wave to wash him from the world. Have you no shame? <laughs> what ails you? Near crying, is it? Ram and I after seeing the love light of the star of knowledge shining from her brow, and hearing words that set you thinking of the holy Bridget speaking with the little infant saints, and now she'll be turning again and speaking hard words to me like an old woman with a spavendy ass she'd have origin on a hill. There's poetry talk for a girl you'd see itching and scratching, and she were a stale stink of patchina on her from selling in the shop. It's her like is fitted to be handling merchandise in the heavens above. And what'll I be doing now, I ask you? And I, a kind of wonder, was jilted by the heavens when a day was by. You'll be doing like myself, I'm thinking, when I did destroy my man. For I'm above many's the day, odd times in great spirits, abroad in the sunshine, down and a stock and north stitch in a shift. And odd times again, looking out on the schooner's hooker's thrall as a sail in the sea. And I thinking of the gallant hairy fellas as drifting beyond. And myself long years living alone. You're like me, so. I am your like. And as for that, I'm taking a fancy to you. And I, with my little house sheen above, where there'd be myself to tend you and none to ask where you are murderer or what at all. And what would I be doing if I left Peggy in? I have nice jobs you could be doing. Gathering shells to make a whitewash for our hut within. Uh. Building up a little goose house. Or stretching a new skin in an old curragh I have. And if my hut is far from all sides, it's there you'll meet the wisest old men, I tell you, at the corner of my wheel. And it's there yourself and me will have great times who is burning and hogging. Is it Peggy and Mike? It's the young girls I'm thinking come for to bring you to the sports below. And what is it that you'll have me to tell them now? Aid me for to win Peggy in. It's herself only I'm seeking now. 
to aid me for the winner. And I'll be asking God to stretch a hand in the hour of death and lay your short cuts through the meadows of ears, up the floor of heaven to the footstool of the virgin sun. There's praying. They're coming. Will you swear to aid and save me for the love of God? If I aid you, will uh, you swear to give me a right away I want uh, and a mountain he ram and a lord of long at Michaelmas the time that you'll be master here? I will, I will be all the elements and the stars are night. Can we not say a word to the old fellow? The way Peggy won't know your story till the end of time. Uh, and if he chances to return again? We'll swear he's a maniac and not your dad. I could take a note if I seen a raven on the sands today. <laughs> Come on, the sport's below Peggy and says you're to call. The leffin's beginning and we've a jockey suit ready to fit on you for the race on the strand. Come below. on, will you? I will, then, if Peggy, Peggy's beyond. Ah, she's above on the board, he's making game of Shawnee and Joe. Then, then I'll be going to her now. <laughs> well, if the worst comes in the end of all, it'll be great game to see that there's none to pity him. But a widow woman the like of me has buried her children and destroyed her man. Excuse me. I just want to ask you a cool question. Which of these facts do you think is uglier? That one's pretty bad because that's more people. That one? It's killing the people who don't even smoke. Uh, I would say the 1,075. I don't agree with you. I gotta go with 137. Okay, we'll vote. Wow. Both of these are true? Yeah. That's a lot of dead people. Did you see yourself? I did not, Jimmy. But I sent Sean Kyo a that cat for to bear him home. Well, isn't he a nasty man to get into such staggers at a morning wake? And isn't herself the devil's daughter for lockin'? And she's so fussy after that young gaffer. <laughs> you might take your debt with drought and none to heed you. Uh, it's no wonder she's fussy. And he after bringing bankrupt rune on the roulette man and the trickle of the loop man. And breaking the nose of the cockshot man and winning all before him in the sports below. Racing, lepping, dancing, and the Lord knows what. <laughs> oh, he's right luck, I'm telling you. If he has, he'll be rightly hobbled yet, and he not able to say ten words without making a brag of the way he killed his father. <laughs> and the great blow he hit with the lie. <laughs> a man can't <laughs> hang by his own informant. And, and his father should be rotten, we know. And supposing the man's digging spuds in that field with a long spade, and supposing he flings up the two halves of that school, what'll be said then in the papers and in the courts of law? Ah, they'd say it was an old Dane, maybe, he was thrown in the flood. Hey, did you never hear tell of the schools they have in the city of Dublin? Ranged out like blue jugs in a cabin of Connacht. And you believe that? Didn't the lad see them? And he after coming from harvest and in the Liverpool boat. They have them there, you see, making a show of the great people that was one time walk on the world. White skulls and black skulls and yellow skulls. And some with full teeth and some haven't only but one. It was no lie, maybe, for when I was a young lad, there was a graveyard beyond the house with the remnants of a man who had thighs as long as your arm. Ugh. Ah, he was a horrid man, I'm telling you. And there was many a fine Sunday I put them together for fun. <laughs> and he with shiny bones. You wouldn't meet the like of these days in the cities of the world. You wouldn't, is it? Lay your eyes on that skull and tell me where and when there was another the like of it. It splintered only from the blow of a lie. Glory be to God. And who hit you at all? It was me own son hit me. Would you believe that? Well, there's wonders hidden in the heart of man. And what way was it done? I'm after walking hundreds and long scores of miles, winning clay in beds and the fill of me belly four times in the day, and I doing nothing but telling stories of that naked truth. Give me, give me a sup in, and I'll tell you now. Uh, ask the widow Quinn beyond. She's the stuff hidden in her shawl. You hear it? You didn't go far at all. I seen the coasting steamer passing, and I got a drought upon me and a cramping leg. So I said, 
The devil go along with them and turn them again and let you give me a subbeam, for I'm destroyed travelling since Tuesday was a week. Sit down, then be the fire and take your ears for a space. You've a right to be destroyed, indeed, which are walking and fighting and facing the sun. There, now is a drink for you, and may it be to your happiness and length of life. God increase you. Lily, Jimmy, do you know what? That man's a raven from his wound today, for I met him a while since telling a rambling tale of a tinker had him destroyed. Then he heard of Christie's deed, and he up and says it was his son had cracked his skull. Oh, it's madness, a fright. For he'll go killing someone yet, and he thinking it's the man has struck him so. Oh, it's a fright, surely. I knew a party was kicked in the head by a red mare, and he went killing horses a great while, till he ate the insides of a clock and died after. Did he see Christy? He didn't. Let you not be putting him in mind of him, or you'll be likely summons if there's murder done. Whist! He's listening. Wait, don't you hear me taking a maze and unraveling all? And what way are you feeling, mister? Are you in contentment now? I'm poorly only, for it's a hard story the way I'm left today, when it was I did tend him from his hour of birth, and he had done never reached his second book. The way he'd come home from school manage the day, with his legs lamed under him, and he blackened with his bacons like a tinker's ass. It's a hard story, I'm saying. The way some do have their necks to nilest, raising up a hand of murder on them, and some is lonesome, getting their death with lamentation in the dead of night. To hear you talking so quiet, who'd know you were the same fellow we seen past today? I'm the same, surely. The rack and ruin of three score years. And it's a terror to live that length, I tell you, and to have your sons going to the dogs against you, and you wore out scolding them and skipping them and God knows what. He's not raven. With a quinn, will you ask him what kind was his son? Was your son that hit you a lad of one year and a score, maybe? A great hand of racing and lipping and licking the world. Didn't you hear me say he was the fool of men? The way from this out he'll know the orphan's lot, with old and young making game of him, and they swearing, raging, kicking at him like a mangy corn. What in the name of God do they want roaring below? That's you, my young lad, the champion playboy of the Western world. Come over to the window till you see it split me half to hear them, and I with pulses in me brain pan for a week gone by. Is it racing there? It is there. The mountain up for the mule race will be running upon the sands. That's the play, boy, on the weakered mule. That lad, is it? If you said it was a fool he was, I'd have laid a mighty oath he was the likeness of me wandering son. Faith, I, I'm thinking I'll go walking for to view the race. You will not. You'd best take the road to Belmullet and not be dilly-dallying in this place where there isn't a spot you could sleep. Don't mind her. Mount there on the bench and you'll have a view of the hall. They're hurrying before the tide will rise, and she'll be near over if you went down the pathway to the crags below. That's a right view again, Deji, the sea. They're off! They're coming out from the point. He's leading. Who is he at all? He's the champion of the world, I tell you, and there isn't a hay for this fallen lucky to his hands today. Look at that. They're pressing him now. He'll win it yet. Take your time, Jimmy Farrell. It's too soon to see it. Watch him taking the gate. There's a riding. Oh, pouty young lad. He's passing the turret. He licked him yet. He'd licked him if he was running races with a score, it's in. Look at the mule he has, kicking the stars. There was a lip. <laughs> He's fallen. <laughs> He's mounted again. <laughs> He's passing them on. Look at him scalping her. And the mountain girl's pushing him on. It's the last turn. The post is clear for them now. Look at the narrow place. He'll be into the bogs. Good rider. He's pulling in. He's neck and neck. Good boy. Flames, but he's in. <laughs> What's that? They're raising him up. They're coming this way. It's Christy be the stars of God. I know his way of spitting and he has tried the move. Stay quiet, will you? That's not your son. Stop him while you get a mud for the abetting of manslaughter and be fined as well. I'll hold him. No, let me out the lot of you till I have me vengeance on his head today. That's not your son. That's the man who's going to make a marriage with the daughter of this house. A place with fine trade, with a license and with Pachin too. That man marrying a decent and a money devil. Is it mad, you sir? Is it in a crazy house for females that I'm landed now? It's mad yourself is with a blow upon your head. That lad is the one that of the rest of you are. I've seen it, me son. You've seen that you're mad. Do you hear them cheering them at the zigzags of the road? And you have to say that your son's a fool. And how would they be cheered in a through aged barn? It's maybe out of reason that that man's himself. There's none surely who go cheer them. Oh, I'm raving with the madness that will fright the world. There was one time I seen ten scarlet devils 
letting on they'd caught me spirit in a gallon can. And one time, I seen a rats as big as badgers sucking the lifeblood from the butt of me look. But I never till this day confused that dribbling Egypt with, with a likely man. I'm destroyed, sure. And who would wonder when it's your brain pan that escaped him now? Then the blight of the sacred drought upon myself and him. For I never went mad to this day. And I not three weeks with the Limerick girls, drinking myself silly and paralytic from the dusk to dawn. Is me visit just there? It is then. You're a sniggering maniac. A child could see. Then I'd best be going to the Union beyond. And there'll be a welcome before me, I tell you. And I a terrible and fearful case. The way that there I was one time, screeching in a straightened waistcoat, with seven doctors writing out me sayings in a printed book. Would you believe that? If you're a wonder itself, you best be hasty. For them lads caught a maniac one time and pelted the poor creature till he ran out raving and foaming and was drowned in the sea. It's true, mankind is the devil when your head's astray. Let me out now and I'll slip down the boreen and not see them so. That's it. Run to the right now and not a one will see. You were at some game and would have been. But I'll walk after him and give him his dinner and a time to rest. And I'll see then if he's raving or as same as you. If you go near that lad, let you be wary of your head, I'm saying. Didn't you hear him telling he was crazed at times? I heard him telling a power. And I'm thinking we'll have right sport before night will fall. <laughs> <laughs> well, Phil, he's a conceited and foolish man. How could that madman have his senses and his brain pan slip? <laughs> I'll go after them and see him turn on Philly now. <laughs> Don't destroy him and he drench him with sweat. Go along, I'm saying, and have your tug of war until he's dried his skin. A fiddle was played by a poet in the years gone by. A fat and three thorn black thorn would lick the scholars out of Dublin town. Oh, hey, thank you. Thank you, Kylie, the lot of you. But you see, it was little only I did this day. If you see me a while since, striking me one single blow. Oh, <laughs> well, you're the lad, and you'll have great times from this out when you could win that wealth of prizes and you sweating in the heat of noon. I'll have great times, surely, if I win the crown and prize I'm seeking now. And that's your promise that you'll wed me in a fortnight when our bands is called. You've right daring to go ask me that. When all knows you'll be starting to some girl in your own town land when your father's rotten in four months or five. Starting from you, is it? I will not then. And when the airs is warming in four months or five, it's then yourself and me should be pacing nafing in the dews of night. The times, sweet smells to be rising and you'd see a little shiny new moon maybe sinking on the hills. And it's that kind of a poacher's love you'd make, Christy man on the sides of Nephine when the night is down. Ah, it's little you'll think, if my love's a poacher's, or an earl's itself, when you feel me two hands stretched around you, and I squeeze and kisses on your puckered lips, till I'd feel a kind of pity for the Lord God is all ages sitting lonesome in his golden chair. That'll be a right fun, Christy man. And any girl would walk her heart out before she'd meet a young man was your like for eloquence or talk at all. Oh, let you wait to hear me talking till we're astray in Eris when Good Friday's by, drinking a sup from a well and making mighty kisses with our wetted mouths, or gaming in a gap of sunshine with yourself stretched back onto your necklace in the flowers of the earth. I'd be nice, so is it. Oh, if the mighted bishop seen you that time, They'd be the like of the holy prophets, I'm thinking, to be strain in the bars of paradise, to lay eyes on the Lady Helena Try, and she abroad, pacing back and forward with a nosegay in her golden shawl. And what is it I have, Christy man, to make me fit and entertainment for the like of you, that has such poets talking, and such bravery of heart? Isn't there the light of seven heavens in your heart alone? 
The way you'll be an angel's lamp to me from this out, and I abroad in the darkness, spearing salmons in the owen or the carol moor. If I was your wife, I'd be along with you those nights, Christy man. The way you'd see I was a great hand at corks and bailiffs, or coining funny nicknames for the stars of night. You, is it? <laughs> Taking your death in the hailstones or in the fogs of dawn. Yourself and me would shelter easy in a narrow bush. But we're only talking, maybe. Or this would be a poor, patched place to hold a fine lad as the like of you. If I wasn't a good Christian, it's on me naked knees I'd be, saying prayers and pathers to every jack straw you have roof in your head, and every stony pebble is paving the laneway to your door. If that's the truth, I'll be burning candles from this out to the miracles of God that have brought you from the south today. And I, with me gowns bought ready, the way that I can wed you and not wait at all. It's miracles, and that's the truth. Me there, toiling a long while, walking a long while, not knowing at all I was drawing all times nearer to this holy day. And meself, a girl, was tempted off and to go sail in the seas, Till I'd marry a Jew man with ten kegs of gold. <laughs> and I not known at all there was the like of you draw nearer, like the stars of God. And to think I'm long years hearing women talking that talk, to all bloody fools. And this the first time I've heard the like of your voice talking sweetly for me own delight. And to think it's me as talking sweetly, Christy man, and I the fright of seven towlands for me biting tongue. Well, the hearts are wonder, and I'm thinking there won't be old like in Mayo for gallant lovers from this hour today. There's me father coming from the way, and when he's had his sleep, we'll tell him, for he's peaceful then. Come on in, Charlie. Uh, the blessing of God and the holy angels on your head, young fella. I hear tell you're after winning all in the sport below. Aye. Wasn't it a shame I didn't bear you along with me to take Cassidy's weight? A fine stout lad the like of you. But you'd never see the match of it for flows and drink. The way when we sunk our bones at noonday in our narrow grave, there were five men, mm. aye, and six men stretched out, reaching speechless on the holy stones. Is that the truth? It is, then. And aren't you a lousy schemer to go burying your poor father unbeknownst, when you'd a right to throw him on the crupper of a kerry mule and drive him westwards, like holy Joseph in the days gone by, the way we could have given him a decent burial? and not have him rotten beyond and not a Christian drinking a smart drop to the glory of his soul. That's well enough, he's lying, for the likes of him. <laughs> Aren't you a hardened slayer? <laughs> It'll be a poor thing for the household man where you go sniffing for a female wife. And look beyond at the shy and decent Christian I've chosen for me daughter's hand. And I after getting the gilded dispensation this day for to wed them now. And you'll be wedding them this day, is it? Aye. Are you thinking if I'm drunk itself, I leave me daughter living single with a little frisky rascal as the likes of you? Is it the truth the dispensations come? Father Riley's after reading it in Gallus Latin. And it's come in the nick of time, says he. So I'll wed them in a hurry. Threading that young gaffer who capsized the stars. He's missed his nick of time. For it's that lad, Christy man, that I'm wedding now. <laughs> You'd be making him a son to me, and he wet and crusted with his father's blood. Aye, wouldn't it be a bitter thing for a girl to go marrying the like of Shawneen? And he a midland kind of a scarecrow, with no savagery or fine words in him at all. Oh, aren't you a hidden daughter? To go shaking the fat of me hat, and I swamped and drowned it with the ways of drink. Would you have them turning on me the way that I be roaring to the dawn of day with the wind upon me hat? Have you not a word to aid me, Shanian? Are you not jealous at all? I'd be afeard to be jealous of a man did slay his dad. Well, it'd be a poor thing to go marrying you, like. I'm seeing that's a world of peril for an orphan girl. 
And isn't it a great blessing I didn't wedge you before himself came walking from the west or south? It's a queer story you'd go picking up a dirty tramp from the highways of the world. And you think you're a likely beau to go straying along with the shiny Sundays of the opening year? When it's sooner on a bullock's liver you'd put a poor girl thinking than on the lily or the rose. And have you no mind of my weight of passion and the holy dispensation and the drift of heifers I'm giving and the golden ring? I'm thinking you're too fine for the like of me, Sean, Kyo, Kilikeen. So I'll let you go off till you'd find a radiant lady with droves of bullocks on the plains of Mead and herself be dizzened in the diamond jewelries of Pharaoh's ma. That'll be your match, Charnine, so God save you now. Won't you hear me tell you I'll take yourself out from this young fella, mm. or I'll maybe add murder to me deeds today. Murder? Mm. Murder, Aye. is it? Yes. Is it mad, you sir? Would you go making murder in this place and it piled with putchy and for our drink tonight? Go on to the foreshore of its fighting you want, where the rising tide will wash all traces from the memory of man. <laughs> I'll not fight a Michael James. I'd leave for live a bachelor, simmering in passions to the end of time, and face a living savage the like of him as descended from the Lord knows where. Strike him yourself, Michael James, or you'll lose my drift of heifers and my blue wool from Schneem. Is it me fight him when it's father slaying his bread to now? Go on, you fool, and fight him now. Will I strike him with my hand? Take the lies on your western side. I'd be afraid of the gallows if I struck with that. Oh, then I'll make you face the gallows or quit off from oh, this. <laughs> well, fine weather be after it. And I'm thinking you wouldn't wish to have that quake in Blackguard in your house at all. I'll let you give us your blessing now and hear her swear her faith to me. For I'm mounted on the spring tide of the stars of luck. The way it'll be good for any to have me in the house. Bless us now, for I swear to God I'll wed him and I'll not renege. It's the will of God I'm thinking that all should win an easy or a cruel end. And it's the will of God that all should rear up lengthy families for the nurture of the earth. What's a single man, I ask you? Eating a bit in one house and drinking a sup in another and he with no place of his own. Like an old brain jackass strayed upon the rocks. <laughs> it's many a being dread to bring your like into their house, Christy man, for to end them maybe with a sudden end. But I'm a decent man of Ireland, and I'd leave for face the grave untimely, and I seen a score of grandsons growing up, little gallant swearers be the name of God. Then go people in me bedside with puny weeds, the like of what you'd breed, I'm thinking of a shiny and cure. <laughs> a daring fellow's the jewel of the world, and a man did split his father's middle with a single clout, should have the bravery of ten. So may God and Mary and St. Patrick bless you and increase you from this mortal day. Amen, Amen O Lord. Lord. Who are you at all? I'm his father, God forgive me. Is it rose from the dead? Do you think I look so easy quenched with the tap of an eye? Oh, and oh. it's lies, you tall Christy man. And let on you had him slitted and you nothing at all. Well, he's not my father. He's a raven maniac and scare the world. Herself dead, the widow queen knows us through. Are you are you're a liar, you're a liar. You're a liar. It himself's a liar, lying stretched out there with an open head on him, letting Annie was dead. When you off race in the hills before I got me breath, with the staff I had seen you turn on me at all. And to think of the course and glory we had given him, and he after doing nothing but hitting a soft blow and chasing northward in a sweat of fear. Quit off from this. But you seen my doings this day, and let you save me from the old man. And why would you be in such a scorch of haste to spur me to destruction now? It's there your treachery is spurring me. Till I'm hard set to think you're the one I'm after, lacing in me heart strings half an hour gone by. Take him on from this, for I think bad the world should see me rage for a monster liar and the fool of men. Rise up now to retribution and come on with me. <laughs> what is it drives you to torment me here? When I'd ask the thunders of the might of God to blast me if I ever did hurt to any, saving only that one single blow. If you didn't, you're a poor good for nothing. And isn't it be the like of you the sins the whole world are committed? In the name of the Almighty yeah. God. Oh, the Lord God. Would you have him sending down droughts and favours and the old hen and the colour of oh, us? 
Let you come between us with a quin and protect me now. I've tried a lot, God help me, and my share is done. Ah, and I must go back into me tarmet, is it? Or run off like a bag of bone, straying through the unions with the dusts of August making mud stains in the gullet of me throat. <laughs> or the winds of March be blowing on me till I take an oath I felt of making whistles of me ribs within. <laughs> I will not then, for there's torment in the splendor of her like, and she a girl any moon of midnight to take pride to meet, facing southwards on the heels of Keel. What did I want crawling forwards to scotch me other standing at her flaming brow? Take a man from this, or I'll set the young lads to destroy him here. Come on, though, if you wouldn't have the company to see your skin. That's it. <laughs> no, the world will see him candy. And he, an ugly liar, was playing off the hero and the fright of men. Let me go. Come here. Let me go, I'm saying. Well, maybe when your legs is limping and your back is blue. Ah, shut your yelling. For if you're after making a mighty man of me this day, be the power of a lie, you're setting me now to think. If it's a poor thing to be lonesome, it's worse maybe to go mixing with the fools of earth. Yeah, keep off. Keep off, lest I don't show a blow to the lot of you and set the guardian angels winking at the clouds above. He's so mad. Who's going to be? Hey, if I am an Egypt, I'm after hearing my voice this day saying words that raise the top knot on a port in a merchant's town. I've won your leopard and your racing. Shut your gullet and come on with me. I'm gone, but I stretch you first. <laughs> They're turning again you. Come on, or you'll be hanged indeed. I'm thinking from this out. Peggy will be giving me her praises the same as in the hours gone by. By the back door, I think bad to have you stifled in the gallows tree. I will not then. To what good would be my lifetime if I left Peggy? Come on, and you'll be no worse than you were last night. And you was a double murder this time to be telling to the gallows. Ah, I'll not leave Peggy. My... Isn't that a match of her in every parish public from Bingham's Town onto the plains of Eve? Come on, I tell you. And I find you finer sweetheart than each way in at all. It's Peggy and I'm seeking only. And what did I care if you brought me a drip to chosen females standing in their shift itself, maybe from this place to the eastern world? Oh, there goes a hang and slip this very good upon him and let him run off to the east. He's raving now, but we'll fit them on and I'll take him in the ferry to the Ackleboat. Ah, let me go, will you? When I'm thinking of my luck this day, for she'll wed me surely, and I a proven hero in the end of all. Take his left hand and we pull him now. Come on, young fella. Ah, what you'll be taking me from her, is it? Your jealous, is it, about wedding me? Hey, here, let you get on from this. Oh, it's in the madhouse. They should put him not in jail at all. We'll go with the back door to call the doctor and we'll save him so. Well, uh, is the old lad killed, surely? And after feeling the last gasps quit in his heart. Look at the way he is. Give us the rope. Twist the hangman's knot on it and slip it over his head while he's not minding at all. Here, let you take it, Shawnee. You're the soberest of all that's here. Is it me go near him and he the wickedest and worst with me? Let you take it, Peggy and Mike. Come on, soul. Oh, oh. <laughs> what is it? Come on to the peelers to this bitch, you know. Is it me? If we took pity on you, the Lord God would maybe bring us ruin from the law today. So you'd best come easy, for hanging is an easy and a speedy end. I'll not stir. And what is it you'll say to me now? And I after doing it this time in the face of all. I'll say a strange man is a marvel with his mighty talk. But what a squabble in your backyard and the blow of a lie have taught me that there's a great gap between a gallus story and a dirty deed. Huh? Take him on from this, or the lot of us will be likely put on trial for his deed today. <laughs> and it yourself will send me off to have a horny fingered hangman hitching his bloody slip knots at the bottom of the ear. Yeah, ah, ah, cut the rope, Peggy, and I'll quit the lot of you. 
I live from this out like the madman of Kiel, laid in muck and green weeds on the faces of the cliffs. And leave us to hang as if for a saucy liar the like you. Take him on, out from this. Come on, pull a twist on his neck and squeeze him so. And a twist yourself, so he can't hurt you, even if you keep your distance from his teeth alone. I'm afraid of him. Lift a lighted sod, will you, and scorch his leg. Leave go now, young fella, or I'll scorch your shin. Come on, come on. Uh, oh, so you're blown for to torture me. So that's your kind, is it? Well, let the lot of you be wary, for if I've to face the gallows, I'll have a gay march down, I tell you, and shed the blood of some of you before I die. Keep a good hold, Philly. Be wary for the love of God, for I'm thinking he would leave the three his pains on me. If I do lay me hands on you, it's the way you'll be at the fall of night, hanging as a scarecrow for the fowls of hell. <laughs> you'll have a gallus jar, I'm saying, coaching out trolling in more than me father's ghost. Oh, make haste, will you? Oh, isn't he a holy terror? And isn't it true for Father Riley that all drinks the curse that has a lot of you so shaky and uncertain now? Uh, if I can wring a neck among you, I'll have a royal judgment looking on the trembling jury in the courts of law. And want to be crying out in me, oh, the day I'm stretched upon the rope with the ladies in their silks and satins, snivelling in their lacy kerchiefs, and rhyming songs and ballads on the terror of me fate. <laughs> oh, my legs bit on me. He's the like of a mad dog, I'm thinking, the way that I will surely die. <laughs> you will, then, the way you can shake out hell's flags of welcome for my coming in two weeks or three. But I'm thinking Satan has many as killed that dad and Kerry and in me or two. Bring the start, will you, Peggy? <laughs> God help him so. Ow! Oh, glory be to God. Hey, oh. hey, will you, will you look what's come in? Oh. Hey, here's old man back again. There you are, Christine. <laughs> are you coming to be killed a third time, is it? Oh, what is, you know? But what is it to have you tied? Ah, that take me to the peelers to be hanged for slaying you. It's the will of God that all should guard the little cabins from treachery of the law. And what would me daughter be doing if I was ruined or was hanged itself? It's little I care if you put a bag on her back and went picking cockles till the hour of death. But me son and myself will be going our own way and we'll have great times from this out. Telling stories of the villainy of Mayo and the fools is here. Uh, Come on now. Huh? I go with you, is it? I will then. Like a gallant captain with his heathen slave. Go on now. And I see you from this day stewing my oatmeal and washing my spuds. For I'm master of all fights from now. Go on, I'm saying. Is it me? Not a word out of you. Get on from this. Glory be to God. I am crazy again. <laughs> oh, ten thousand blessings upon all that's here. For you've taught me a likely gaffer in the end of all. The way I go romancing through a rumpin' lifetime. From this hour to the dawning of the judgment day. Oh, be the will of God, we'll have peace now for our drinks. Will you draw the porter, Peggy, in? It's a miracle Father Riley can wed us in the end of all, and we'll have none to trouble us when his vicious bite is healed. Quit me sight! Oh, my grief. I've lost him, surely. I've lost the only playboy of the Western world.